This ESP8266 module, in this case a ESP12, can act as a Wi-Fi repeater. It's got the circuitry so we can easily upload firmware and if you're interested in that module, I'll put in a link down below. So let's fire it up. Now the principle of operation of this whole thing is the following. The ESP8266 module can, of course, as you know, act as a Wi-Fi client, so it connects to your home Wi-Fi network. My uh, desktop computer that you can see in the lower right corner is also connected to that network. And both clients are assigned IP addresses. Our Wi-Fi modules gets a 192.168.1.2. Dot 78. But there's more to it than that. Um, the module can be sort of split in halves and the other side of the module can act as an access point. That's what's called station AP mode in ESP8266 speak. So to that access point the laptop on the left side can connect and it's then assigned an IP address from the 192.168.4.0-24 subnet. Now when it sends a packet to my desktop machine, the packet is forwarded by the firmware in the ESP module because forwarding is enabled there. But the reply packet uh, will never get uh, across the ESP module because the router does not know where to put it. Well, it should go all the way to the left, but the router does not know that. Here, something calls into play that we call a static route. A static route in the router tells the router where to put uh, a packet that's distinct for a specific subnet. So in this case, all the route, all the packets going to uh, the 192.168.4.0 slash 24 subnet have to be sent via 192.168.1.78. And you can put that into your router's web interface usually, or possibly a command line, depending. So the packet will be sent back. Now that was an easy one. Now if we want to connect to the internet, we need name resolution. And uh, the, uh, the DHCP server on the ESP8266 does, if it's activated in the firmware, assign um, a DHCP server address. In this case, 192.168.4.1. So we have to run uh, DNS server on the module. In this case, it's not a full-blown server. It's just a, a UDP forwarder listening on on, on UDP port uh, 53. And having that, we can resolve names and send um, requests to the internet and get reply, of course, because it's all um, hidden behind the Wi-Fi router. Now that much for the principle of operation. Uh, let's just put that into practice and see if it works. So I'm connecting to my uh, access point. It's connected now. And I run the, um, the UDP forwarder software. So to make sure it works, uh, we're here on my desktop machine. We can ping both the ESP module and the laptop on the other side. Uh, if it's a Windows machine, make sure you got the firewall off. So this is the view of the uh, of the laptop machine. It's a very high resolution machine, so I'm sorry you can't really see properly. I'm doing a NS lookup to see if the name resolution works, and I can also uh, ping stuff on the internet, as you see in a second. And I can see the requests, DNS requests going through the module, and I can see that the module is still connected to my, um, to my Wi-Fi router. Well, let's get back to the uh, to the laptop. Here we go. It's loading a web page that works, and we can also do a trace route to ensure um, that we see all the hops of the of the packets going through. Now oh, that'll take a moment. 
Now you've just seen uh, one element failing on the web page. It looks like it hasn't loaded um, an, an ad banner or something. And that's that's a bit of one of the downsides. It's not super reliable, so they still might have to go a little more work into that. I see trace routes working along. It's a, taking quite a while. It's a long route. And from time to time, what happens is um, the module disconnects from my from my access point, probably due to the fact that it's only got one radio, and well, if that's busy, the other side might fail. But it reconnects, and it's good to go again. So have fun with that. <laughs>